Hello, 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 can you hear me? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I couldn't tell. Good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you this morning to Heart City Church. It's so good to be here. It's so good to see all your faces today. And we are just going to have a great service, just giving glory to God, worshiping him. So right now, I just want to invite you all to stand, give a good stretch, wake up your bodies a little bit. Um, so quick story, this morning as we were, we came in and we were practicing and our very first song was just not right and we prayed and um, the Lord gave us another song, and it is very much an invitation song, a song of whatever you brought with you this morning, the Lord is ready to just come and take it. He is ready for you to come to feast off of his table, to see his goodness. Um, he's just ready to meet with you today. And so as we are, are singing and worshiping and listening to the word, I just encourage you all to just to, to just take a second and listen for what the Lord may be telling you this morning. So let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for another day of life. We thank you that you are here with us right now in this moment. We thank you that you never leave us or forsake us. That regardless of our circumstances, you are here with us. Lord, we just pray that you would move this morning, that you would move through our hearts, that we would be able to hear your voice, that when we close our eyes, we'd be able to see your face. God, let us just bring you all of the glory and the honor this morning. We can't do anything without you. So be with us right here in this moment. Let this be an Ebenezer moment in our lives where we say we met with the Lord. And we just ask this all in Jesus' name, amen. Sing, come to the water. Come to the water, all who are thirsty. Come and drink. Come to the river, all who are hungry.
let's taste and see that he is good. He invites us to come into his presence, to taste of his goodness, to see what he has done in our lives. This morning as we were praying as a team, we took a moment and just thought of certain times this week that we've seen the goodness of God in our own lives. That sometimes the craziness of life just, we don't stop. We don't stop to think about everything that he's done. We, we focus on what's next or, you know, oh, that crazy thing that happened. And sometimes he just calls us to remember where we've seen his fingerprint in our lives. So we're gonna sing, let's taste and see that he is good because he is. drink from the well, come to the table, all who are hungry, come and feast, and those who are weary, those who are needy, we just we sit here in this moment right now 
We want more of you. We wanna be like you. We want more of your presence. We wanna be close to you. You are so good to us, God, you are so good. And I don't wanna leave this place thinking anything other than that, anything other than you are good. I want my, my soul and my body to thirst for you, to hunger for you, to wanna be with you every day, to wanna spend more and more time with you. We just love you. We thank you for your presence. Let's sing this out. I've been told to live my own truth, do whatever makes me feel good, get rid of boundaries, the rules are stifling, chase good feelings, the soon will be gone. But I found myself more lost than ever, enslaved and bound by my desires. And that's not freedom. Sing this out, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, make me more like Jesus. Every day a little more like Jesus. Crucify my flesh with yours so my new life might be secured. Everything I do, done so I can honor you. Resurrect me, sanctify me, make me into your image. Make me into your image, God. change come in more of you and less of me transformation by your spirit in me now that I know you I know there's no one else for me cause I have found the one my soul loves now I find myself more alive than your desires now this is freedom make me more like Jesus every day a little more like Jesus crucify my flesh with yours so my new life might be secured everything I do it's done so I can honor you Resurrect me, sanctify me, make me into your image. Whoa, whoa, make me into your image. Who oh, we sing, praise be to God. Praise be to God, praise be to God. You saved me from myself. Praise be to God, praise be to God, a new life I've been down. Oh, never look back, no, I can't go back, I'm yours. Oh, I'll never look back, never look back, no, I can't go back, I'm yours. Singing praise be to God, praise be to God, praise be to God, you saved me from myself. Praise be to God, praise be to God, a new life I've been down. Oh, never look back, no, I can't go back, I'm yours. No, I can't, 
Oh, never look back. No, I can't go back. I'm yours, yes. Make me more like Jesus. Every day a little more like Jesus. Crucify my flesh with yours so my new life might be secured. Everything I do, it's done so I can honor you. Resurrect me, sanctify me, make me into your, make me more like Jesus, every day a little more like Jesus. Crucify my flesh with yours, so my new life might be secured. Everything I do, it's done so I can honor you. Resurrect me, sanctify me, make me into your image. Make me into your image. Holy Spirit, make me more like Jesus. Every day a little more like Jesus. Crucify my flesh with yours so my new life might be secure. Everything I do, done so I can honor you. Resurrect me, sanctify me, make me into your the spirit leads where the spirit leads as I'm following I depend on you I depend on you for the victory still of me. 
when I pass through death as I enter I depend on you I depend on you for eternal just continue to draw us close this morning. God, as we continue to worship you in different ways this morning by listening to the word through prayer, through branch outs, God, I just pray that you would just continue to draw us close to you this morning that you are the way, the truth and the life. You're the river that overflows and you keep flowing and you keep pouring out. And God, I pray that we would just want more of you this morning. We love you and we pray that you would just continue to sit with us this morning in Jesus' name, amen. Normally we would have announcements at this point in time, which I promise we're going to do because we got to keep you in the loop about what's going on in the life of the church because there's lots of really good things. But before that, uh, I want to revisit something that we've been doing each and every week for several weeks, which is recognizing this lantern up here. Who remembers what this lantern is all about? Does anyone just want to shout it out? Trinity. Whenever we've had the chance to tell somebody about Jesus as a church, we recognize that part of our uh, responsibility as believers is to be the light of the world. Jesus said so himself. And so whenever we have an opportunity to be the light by sharing with somebody the hope of Jesus Christ, we light this lantern just to show that our church is doing our part in being the light of the world. And so uh, I didn't ask this person if I could share this. I'm not going to share their name just in case. But I did get to talk to somebody this week who uh, wanted me to know that they got to share the gospel with somebody at work. They, were, uh, they work in a pretty negative environment. 
and uh, there was a lot of negativity going around, and this person leaned into the difficulty and said, hey, just so you know, it doesn't have to be like this. I believe in a God of hope, and I believe that the mindset that you're staying in can be cured by the Lord, and got to share the gospel with their co-worker. And so I just wanted to, uh, can we just say praise God? Can we put our hands together and praise the Lord that that person now has a little more light in their life? And we're going to pray that that gospel seed was planted deep enough that that person will come to know Jesus Christ. Is there anyone that would like to, to share? Did you have a gospel opportunity this week to share the hope of Jesus with somebody? I don't want to just forego the opportunity for you to share if you had the chance to share the hope of Jesus with somebody. I want to give you an opportunity to share so that we can be encouraged as a church that God is using all of us to share the gospel. Is there anybody that would like to share a chance that you had to share the gospel? Going once, going twice. Okay, we're going to, going three times, somebody said. Yes. So I just want to encourage you. I know that it's hard to get up and speak in front of people, uh, but I promise you two things. One, this is an incredibly safe place. Uh, I've had the privilege of pastoring a few churches, and the community in this place is a loving community, and whenever you share, you will be received well. And so just wanted to put that out there. Second off, it does the entire church well whenever you have the courage to share something that God has done that you have seen because we don't have your eyes and we don't always get to see how you have seen God moving in your life. And so whenever you share, you give us courage as a body. And so I just wanted to encourage you, talk to the Lord about sharing those things. Are you here to share? Hey, praise God. Here you go. What is the line? The well that never runs dry. You are the well that never runs dry. There we go. <laughs> As we sang that, um, I was literally thinking of just the dryness of my bank account. <laughs> um, last week, and this is very vulnerable to share, but last week um, we had 17 cents. <laughs> in our checking account. And many of you know that um, the Lord uh, called me to walk away um, from my career of nursing, um, at least in the fashion that I was doing it in, um, and has, has called me into full-time um, ministry and um, to work with children. And he's provided a way for me to work at Mansfield Christian and to be able to speak in the lives of children and teenagers um, daily. But we've, we've been weeks, oh, well, actually a month now without income, um, and it's probably going to be a few more weeks without seeing our income from Mansfield Christian. And we literally, I couldn't even buy um, milk <laughs> and bread. And I said to Scott, I don't know what we're going to do. Um, and I started, I told you last week that I started to even look, look online and, okay, Lord, I just need to go back to my security of, um, of nursing jobs, right? And so I started to look online and the Lord was like, no, that's not what I called you to do. You need to abide in me. You need to just trust in me. Um, and so we, we received a blessing and Scott, I, Scott said, we need to tithe on that. And so I was like, but we can't buy bread and milk. And so we were obedient, and we tithed on that. And literally, the well that doesn't run dry, I was asleep. Um, I don't even know what night it was. I think it was Sunday night into Monday. And some money showed up in our Venmo account. And then a few hours later, some more money showed up in our Venmo account, and the person said, um, the Lord told them to send more, and then a couple hours later, the person said, the Lord isn't stingy, and then sent a little bit more, 
and it was enough. Someone else actually reached out to us and gave us money to buy groceries. And so we were able to buy groceries and we were able to pay the couple bills that I needed to pay this week. And there's not an abundance there, but there was just enough. Um, the well um, he provided. And so I just wanted to be faithful in letting you know and proclaiming that the Lord will provide whatever your need is um, this day, whether it's something emotional, mental, physical, money, spiritual, whatever it is, lean into him, abide with him, and he is the well that will never run dry. He will meet all of your needs. All right, I, uh, I'm always, I, I, I don't want to speak up because for me, for me, it's like a default thing of, of being able to share the gospel with people because outside of here, I get to share the gospel every week with, with kids at Mansfield Christian. So that's kind of a, a default thing, but outside of that, I know that I also, I need to be able to share the gospel with others even outside of that because that's kind of like a, a safe place, right? Well, kind of along those lines, though, this week I got to speak to a bunch of fourth graders and uh, I spoke to them out of James. Uh, Miss Bell, are you here? Is Annabelle in here somewhere? Hey, Miss Bell, do you remember what I talked about at your fourth grade retreat this week? I know, I'm sorry. Huh? What? Well, that was in chapel, yeah. Okay. So, real quick, I talked about James. That we go through trials of many kinds, the testing of our faith. That life oftentimes is a test, right? And then it talks about, follow it up, say, if anybody needs wisdom, they should ask God, who provides without finding fault, right? And so I told Miss Bell and I told others in fourth grade, I said, there are two things I always want you to remember. When life brings tests your way, when you're going through difficult trials, you always have two options. The life is always an open book test. When you hate, you hate tests at school, but one of the things we always ask our teacher when it was test time, can we use our books? And so I said, life is an open book test. God gives us his word always when we're going through difficult times. The second thing is that we can always, haul, we can always call on a friend. We always have a partner. Because I always love that when we, could, when we came to test, we, the teacher would say, hey, you guys get to use a partner today. I love that. And so that was my thing to them. I hope they never forget that when it comes to life, that is always an open book test, and that you can always use a partner. Okay, you are never alone. The thing the enemy wants to always remind you of is that you're always, that you're alone in all this. You're struggling. That you're by yourself. Nobody cares. And yet, as Billy shared this week, by being vulnerable, by being open, that God showed us that you are never alone. You are never alone. And that's why I know, especially that as we've been talking, especially in branch out times and everything else. There's been a desire for us to have these times where we can be with one another and be completely open, to have these safe places with one another. And that's why we're putting together these community groups, and, and, um, and Pastor Maddie's going to come and, and share about that more as she gives her announcements. But yeah, so that's just even my thing, guys. Remember, no matter what you're going through, you are never alone. The Lord wants to remind you that whenever difficult times come, you are never alone. Mm. You are never alone. Pastor Maddie is going to come and, and bring us the announcements so that we can continue to get plugged into the life of the church here. Hey, good morning, church. Are you guys uh, about tired of hearing from us yet? We've still got more. We've got more for you. You've heard from almost our whole pastoral team this morning, which is great. But, hey, we are so glad uh, that you chose to worship with us today at Heart City. Um, we're aware you could have chosen a lot of places to worship or not to worship at all. And so we're just thankful that you're here um, and just praying that the Lord would speak to you um, as, as the service continues, as we continue to worship. I have a few announcements for us. Um, first of all, I hope you guys, a lot of you did get to join us this week, but we had some awesome events this week. And just thank you to everybody who participated in that, who came. We had a worship night. We had Heart City Closet. We had a fall festival yesterday. And it was an awesome, awesome time. So make sure you're getting plugged into the things in the life of the church, which on that note, this wasn't on my announcements, but I was like, I feel like I should say this. Um, we have a lot of stuff to get connected. Um, and so if you are like, I want to go deeper. 
deeper with the Lord, deeper with his church, deeper with um, community, uh, then we have ways to do that. I was thinking about the songs we were singing about abiding in the Lord and being made more like Jesus. And part of that is walking in community with his, with his church. Um, and so we've got ways for you to do that. And I just want to encourage you this week to take it a step deeper, a step further um, than maybe you have before. And so a couple ways you can do that right after service. Every Sunday we have something called branch out groups. Um, adults, you'll go out and go to the left. Kids, go out and go to the right. Um, kids have stuff for their age. And adults, we talk about the service. It's really simple. There's nothing fancy about it. But it's so, so good. Such a rich time. So please join us for that. Um, Wednesday night, 6.30 to 8, we have kids, teens, and adult um, stuff happening. So come join us um, for that as well. And then on top of that, uh, Pastor Scott mentioned it, but we have community groups starting. You may have gotten a little piece of paper from me today, and if you haven't yet and you want to be a part of a community group, I still have it for you. Okay, community groups, like Pastor Scott said, are really small accountability groups is what it's going to be, um, who are going to meet weekly um, and just talk about life and their Christian walk. Um, they're going to have some accountability questions to um, help us all be more vulnerable with where we're at in our walk with Christ and to make us truly more like Jesus. And so I'm super excited for these to start. Um, a few notes. You've gotten your piece of paper, or you will by the end of the day if you said you want to be a part of one. It has your whole community group on it. There's also an item at the bottom. So this was an idea we had. You guys heard us talk a little bit about finances last week. One way that we are going to help with this is each community group has been assigned an item to continually be bringing to the church. Things like granola bars, coffee, creamer, those things that we go through all the time. Um, and so we invite your community group to participate in serving the church um, in that way. If you can't do it, no worries. It's okay. But we want to invite you into that. Groups, we will give you some more information on what to do to begin meeting. But really, you need to start talking to your group and figure out what time in the week would be best for you guys to meet. If you're like, I don't even know what this is. I wasn't a part of this conversation. And you want to be a part of a community group, see Pastor Scott, and he will get you plugged into one of them that's happening. It's not too late, okay? Um, so that is community groups. One other, like, big announcement I need to share with you guys. This is a huge blessing from the Lord. Um, as you might know, both buildings, the Journey Building and Heart City Building, have a lot of work that needs done on them. We are super blessed by our buildings, and we're thankful for them, but a lot of work needs done. We had um, a pastor reach out to us and say, hey, I want to talk to you guys about what that looks like. And he came, and he brought a contractor friend, and they looked at everything we had, and they said, our church, as a work and witness thing, wants to help your churches um, do this work. And so on November 11th, on November 11th, it's a Saturday, the rain date is the next Saturday, the 18th. We are having a work day, and we're starting over at the Journey Church. So there's a lot of issues with the foundation. That's why water's getting in, and we're getting mold, mildew, things like that in the basement. They are going to help us with that, with the expertise of the work, but also they're providing all the supplies for it. And so that is huge. Their church voted unanimously to help us with that. Um, so please, what we need is we need some people to help um, with food. We're going to be providing lunch. And then we also need people to come and work. Like, just show up. Even if you're like, I don't know what I'm doing, just show up. We'll find something for you to do. Um, we don't want just their church showing up, right? We want to show up and help as well. Um, and then at that date, we are going to talk about a whole weekend work and witness trip that might involve other churches, too, to come and renovate our bathrooms back here um, to make them handicap accessible, single stall bathrooms that can be used. So that's a lot to tell you. But please come November 11th, um, and we are just going to, we're going to work together, and it's just going to be such a blessing. Um, okay, watch for holiday calendars. Holiday calendars are going to be coming out so you know everything that's happening during the holiday season with our churches. So please um, be watching for those. Okay, I think that's all my announcement. So last but not least is we continue um, worshiping through our giving, through the giving of our tithes and offerings. Um, we believe that the Lord multiplies everything we give him, and when we give him what we have, even when it hurts a little bit, like Billy testified, we, we trust that he is going to provide for us. So we invite you into the act of worship, of giving. You can give in person in the black box. You can give online um, on our website or on Venmo. Um, we have all those things. I uh, am going to, I don't think I put the graphic up there, but last week I told you guys we were at like 
22% or something like that of our goal for the whole month. Um, this week, we are at like 44% of our goal. So we're definitely moving forward, um, but there still is a gap um, to meet our, our goal. So yeah, that was last week's, but we have another one. We're 44% now. So I'm going to do something that we don't normally do. I'm going to pray, which is normal, before uh, Zane comes up and gives, gives the word today. But I just want to invite you guys in. We are going to just ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to give? Sometimes we have our own agenda, right, and our own ideas and our own things. But we're going to stop and we're going to say, Lord, what do you want from me? What do you want me to give? Um, and then I just invite you to listen to him, whatever that looks like. So let's pray. Jesus, we give you thanks for this morning full of worship in so many ways. Worship through giving, worship through serving, worship through singing, worship through opening up of your word. But, Lord, we come to you right now specifically with worshiping through giving, God. And we just ask you, our hands are open, Lord. What do you want us to give today? Would you speak to us? God, we want to be obedient. We know that living in obedience to you is far greater than hoarding and keeping things to ourselves. So, God, we trust you. What do you want from us this morning? I pray that that we would listen. Jesus, I pray that you would bless anything that's given this morning, anything that's given last week or this next week, God, that you would bless it, that it would be used only for your kingdom work, Lord, that you would be honored and pleased with every penny that is spent, Jesus, that you would multiply it, God. We know that you are the ultimate provider and you will provide for every one of our needs, God, so we trust you. Lord, I pray for Pastor Zane as he comes and he gives your word, Lord, I just, I ask that our, our hearts would be soft and our ears would be open, God. May we not be like the people in Scripture where Jesus said, your ears are not open and so you do not hear. God, may we not waste this next 30 or so minutes. Would our hearts be moldable? Would we look more like you when we walk out of the sanctuary than when we walked in it this morning, Jesus? We love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I got the thumbs up. Oh, there, there I am. Good morning. <clears throat> How are you all doing? I'm so excited that you all are joining us here this morning, whether it be here in person or if you're watching online. We're so glad that you all are joining us. Uh, before I get started, though, I would like to just pray, pray over the sermon. And so if you all would, please bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this wonderful opportunity I get to speak your word. I ask that you be with me. As I give this sermon, uh, open the ears of everyone in here and let something I say today speak to them. God, again, I thank you for this opportunity, and I pray all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Now, my goal for today is to preach a sermon longer than Jake, and so <laughs> we all know how long Jake normally goes, and so I'm going to try and beat him today. So we'll see if I actually make it to uh, a Jake-length sermon. Uh, like Pastor Maddie said, I feel like I know most of you all here, but if I don't know you, my name is Zane Sanders. I am a senior pastoral ministry major student over at Mount Vernon Nazarene University, and I've been interning, interning here at Heart City for a few years now. And I was telling Bailey this morning, this is actually the first time I've gotten to speak here. I don't know how I've made it this long without having gotten to preach here, but somehow it's happened. And so I'm super excited to get to share with you all this morning. Uh, to begin my sermon, I have a, a few pictures I want to show you all of some different people or characters, um, just some people that I grew up on that were important to me or cool to me as a kid. So if we could have uh, the first person up on the screen. So Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump was always big in my family. We love watching Forrest Gump. Uh, Forrest Gump is a super iconic movie character. Uh, played by Tom Hanks, one of the most famous actors of all time. And so Forrest Gump was always uh, super cool to us as a kid. We'd watch it as a family. Uh, if I could have the next picture, next person. The Flash. Uh, me and my, my family love watching movies, and my dad is a huge DC fan. And so growing up, watching a lot of Batman, a lot of Superman, different superheroes, uh, but I always thought The Flash was super cool. He's got 
um, all kinds of comics. There's a show of The Flash that's really cool. They just came out with a movie this summer. And so to me, The Flash was someone else who was super important to me, somebody that I thought was really cool. And then if we could have the third person, please. And then Usain Bolt. I was lucky enough to get to grow up and be able to say that I got to watch Usain Bolt on TV competing in the Olympics. Uh, it was cool getting to see him compete, win different kinds of medals. And so Usain Bolt, The Flash, and Forrest Gump were always uh, super cool to me growing up, super iconic people and people that I was lucky enough to get to watch. Now, I picked these three people because they do have something in common I'm sure something stood out to you all that the three of them do or have in common. So would anyone like to just shout out what it is these three do? I see a hand. They like to run. Good. Yes, that's what the three of them have in common. Uh, The Flash runs because he's a speedster. He's a superhero. And so he runs super fast to fight villains. Uh, Forrest Gump runs for enjoyment. He likes to run. Uh, I thought about using a Forrest Gump voice there, but I'm sure no one would want to hear that. It probably would have gone really bad. And then, like I said, Usain Bolt competed in the Olympics and track and field, and so he would run for enjoyment for also uh, competition. And so the three of them are runners. They run physically to train every single day to complete the tasks that they're trying to do. And the reason I picked the three of them, the three of these runners, is because we also run. See, I said the three of them run physically for different reasons, as I've named, but the rest of us also run in different kinds of ways. We like to run mentally, we like to run emotionally, and sometimes we even end up running spiritually. Now, this can look like different ways. Many of us struggle with this idea of running. Situations come up in our lives, life gets tough sometimes, and circumstances happen that we can't control And sometimes it feels like the only way to solve these problems that come up is to just run away from them, to avoid these situations that we've been placed in. We tend to run from our emotions. We tend to run from our problems, from conflict. Some of us might run from our faith. Or one of the biggest ways we run, whether we realize it or not, is we run from God's calling on our lives. Now, last week, Jake talked about being forged in fire, about how God saves us through the fire and not from the fire. And that kind of ties into what we're going to be talking about this week, because sometimes God calling in our lives looks like being placed in the fire. And so learning what that looks like being in the fire rather than running from it and trying to get out of it, depending on God's plan for us, what he's called us to do. For some of us, we may be uncertain about what God has called us to do, And that's totally okay. We believe that God's timing is perfect, that God calls us in the right circumstances at the right times. And so if you feel like God might not be calling you to something big, something specific right now, it might be because he's preparing you for that calling. He's preparing you mentally. He's preparing your heart for the calling that he's going to be putting on our lives. For some of us, we do feel God calling us to something And we say, okay, I understand God's calling me to this, and I'm going to follow his calling for me. I'm going to do as he says, and I'm going to live out that calling that he has for me. I think for most of us, though, we can agree that we felt God tugging on our hearts in some kind of way, and rather rather than doing what God wants us to do, instead, we run. Now, some may be asking what this means, what God calling us to do something looks like. It can look like a variety of different ways. It can look like God calling us to a vocation, to some kind of career that God is calling us into. We may be called to major life choices. Uh, It it could be moving. It could be, like I said, taking on a new job, a new relationship. Or sometimes it can be called to give something up, something important in your life that you've held on to for so long that God is asking you to give up uh, in his name. When we run from these things, we start to put faith in things that we know we probably shouldn't be putting faith in. There we go. We rely on other things to help us cope instead of just doing what God has in store for us. My goal for today is that all of us here who do feel like runners would instead leave today feeling like followers. Followers ready to follow the calling that the Lord has on us. 
Today we're going to be looking at passages from the book of Jonah, and we're just going to be starting in chapter 1, verse 1. So if you have your Bibles, I'm going to be reading from the NIV version. If you don't have your Bibles, that's okay. The verses will also be up on the screen. And so like I said, we're going to be looking at Jonah 1, verse 1, and it says this, The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. But, Jonas, but Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. Everybody say Tarshish. Tarshish. He went down to Joppa. Everybody say Joppa. Joppa. See, it's fun, right? He went to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Now, I want to pause here for a second, and it's because here we see that God has put a calling on Jonah's life. He's called him to preach to the city of Nineveh. He's preached him to min- or called him to ministry, and a lot of times when we hear God calling us to something, it might be through thoughts or from actions from others or things other people say to us, but in this circumstance, Jonah is actually hearing from the Lord, actually hearing straight from God what he's calling him to do. And rather than listening, rather than going to Nineveh, like God has called him to do, Jonah does as we typically do and runs away. He tries to get away from the calling God has put on him. He tries to get away from Nineveh so that he doesn't have to go and preach to them. And so instead of listening to what God has called him to do, instead he flees. We're going to pick back up in verse 4. It says, Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. All the sailors were afraid, and each cried out to his own God. And they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone below deck, where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. The captain went to him and said, How can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. Maybe he will take notice of us so that we will not perish. Then the sailors said to each other, Come, let us cast lots to find out who is responsible for this calamity. They cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. So they asked him, Tell us who is responsible for making all this trouble for us. What kind of work do you do? Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? He answered, I am a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. This terrified them, and they asked, What have you done? They knew he was running away from the Lord because he had already told them so. So at this point, Jonah has made what I like to call a pretty big oopsie. (laughs) See, Jonah has received a calling from God and ran from it, and now is in the middle of this huge storm that God has placed on it. Now, I do want to point out here that Jonah is fleeing, and because he's fleeing, it's not just affecting him. See, there are men on the boat with him, and because of his decision to not follow God's calling, his decision to try and flee, the other men on the boat are affected, and they're affected, they're scared, they're telling Jonah they're afraid, and so because of his decision to not follow God's calling, these other men are also affected because of this decision. When we flee from God's calling, it doesn't always just affect us. People around us can also be affected when we don't live out God's plan for our lives. And these verses, I feel like, are a great testimony to that. Now, unfortunately, today we're not going to be looking at uh, what happens next, which is when Jonah gets swallowed by the whale or the big fish, depending on the translation. Instead, uh, we're going to be skipping to chapter 3. And I'm going to have to read off the screen because I just realized I closed my Bible. So uh, we're going to be reading chapter 3, verses 1 through 10, which reads this. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim it to the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed and all of them 
from the greatest to the least, put on a sackcloth. When Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. This is the proclamation he issued in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, do not let people or animals, herds or flocks, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink. But let people and animals be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction that he had threatened. And so this time we see the other side of the story. We see the other end where Jonah actually does listen to the calling that God has placed on his life. We see Jonah receiving what God has to say, and he lives it out. Do you see what happens when Jonah does as he is told? A city that Jonah thought could never see transform gives up their old ways, their evil ways, and instead gives their lives to the Lord. Who's to say that if we do what God says, we won't see a transformation like Jonah saw? In Mansfield, in Lexington, in Mount Vernon, or even in all of Richland County. God isn't asking us to go to dangerous territory to preach his word. Instead, he's saying, Zane, Andrew, Jake, Maddie, Bailey, Scott, Billy, I have so much in store for you. I have these big plans for you. All you have to do is say yes and do as I say. Now, some of us are probably saying, well, I do feel God calling me to do something, but I'm not capable of doing what God has actually called me to do. My answer to you is this. Uh, There's a great man in the Bible by the name of Paul. Now, you could argue that Paul is the greatest testimony to what can happen if you follow God's plan, Um, but that's another sermon for a different day. But Paul wrote to a bunch of different churches, and most of those letters he wrote were then translated into different books in the New Testament. And there's a really cool verse that I love that comes from Ephesians, and it's in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, which reads this, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance. For us to do. God created us to do his works. His good works, in fact. Unlike Usain Bolt or The Flash, we don't have to do any kind of training, any kind of heavy running or lifting to do the good works which God prepared, which God wants for us, because God already prepared the good works which he has called us to do. We are perfectly made to do God's works, and lives will change if we're due as we're called to do. Now, I know sometimes God's plan may seem scary, or it may feel like we're not cut out for it, but running isn't what we need to do. Jonah felt the same way, and he tried running, he tried fleeing. However, when he followed God's plan for him, he saw amazing things happen in the city of Nineveh. This kind of brings me to my final point, uh, which is this, something I want you all to kind of wrestle with and ask yourselves. Are you going to continue to run from God's plan in your life, or instead, are you going to run with it? Are you going to continue to flee from the things God is calling you to do, or instead, are you going to accept it with open arms, saying, God, I'm ready. Lead me to where it is you want me to go. In my quiet time, I I love listening to worship music. A lot of times, I reflect on it. I'll listen to songs multiple times. And sometimes I'll even find myself looking through the lyrics to see what it is the song is actually saying. And here recently, a song that I've been listening to a lot that I've been reflecting on and has spoken to me is the song Good Plans by Red Rocks Worship. Now, uh, Jake is going to make his way up and is going to play it for us here in a second. But before he does that, I want to read to you all what the chorus says just so you all can reflect on it before we go into this time of worship. The chorus reads, he has good plans, he has good plans for me. 
So I will take heart in deserts and in gardens. He has good plans. He has good plans for me. If I know my father, I know my father has good plans. God has good plans for your life. So are you going to choose to run from it? Or are you going to choose to run with it? Let's pray. Family Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the people of Heart City, the people of Mansfield and Lexington and all of the good works this church is doing. God, I thank you uh, for this day. I thank you for the sermon you've allowed me to preach. And God, I come to you humble, saying that even myself struggle with running from the calling you have on my life. But God, I stand here today saying that I'm ready to put my full trust in you and know that I might not know where it is you're calling me to in the next year or so, but I know that you are preparing me and preparing that church for me to come. And so, God, I come to you saying that I'm tired of running. I'm admitting to stop running and instead going to run towards you. God, again, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this church and all they're doing. And I pray all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Let's reflect on this song in worship. Lord is my share. shepherd and he is everything I need so I will not worry I will not fear the enemy he said that he loves me he said that he's with me even though I walk through the valley with shadow and death and still I know he has good plans he has good plans for me. So I will take heart in deserts and gardens. He has good plans. He has good plans for me. If I know my Father, I know my Father has. Savior, so why should I doubt my victory? Why would I question the rod and the staff that comfort me? He quiets the waters, He quiets the storm inside of me. So what could be better than walking with Him when I believe He has good plans? good plans for me so I will take heart in deserts and gardens he has good plans he has good plans for me if I know my father I know my father he has good If I know my father. 
father, I know my father. Surely your goodness and mercy will follow after me. So fear will not find me, cause I'll be dwelling in the house of God. And surely take heart in deserts and gardens. He has good plans. He has good plans for me. If I know my father, I know my father. He has good plans. He has good plans for me. I will take heart in deserts and gardens. He has good plans. He has good plans for me. If I know my father, I know my father. As we reflect on that song, we know the plans that the Lord has for us. As Pastor Zane shared, we are way better spending our effort if we are running toward the calling that God gives us than running away. A lot of good it did Jonah, am I right? So this week, let's reflect on what God's calling us to do and ask ourselves, God, what can I do to run with you and not from you? So go in peace, church. And as you leave this place, knowing that the God who calls you is running the race with you and giving you everything you need to run the race well. Go in peace until we come to worship together again next week. God bless you all. Uh -huh.